Hello and welcome to part two of our video series designed to share insight into the selection, seeding, and bracketing process for the Division I Men's Basketball Championship. Today, our focus will be on selecting the field. The first action item that takes place in the selection room is the 12-person committee's casting of their individual initial ballots. This generally takes place Wednesday afternoon. This is a relatively simple process that involves each committee member designating teams as tournament locks for at-large bids in the event they don't win their league's automatic bid, or designating them as under-consideration teams, meaning the committee member isn't fully convinced they are a tournament team, but at the very least thinks they possibly could get in over the course of discussion and further votes that will take place during the selection meeting. Committee members can vote up to 24 teams as at-large locks. Committee members can vote as many teams as they'd like on their under-consideration list. Only schools that merit serious consideration for a possible at-large berth to the tournament should be included. Normally, about 40 schools receive this designation. Once each committee member electronically submits their ballot, the votes are tallied and two separate boards are created. The at-large board, consisting of teams that received enough support to be voted into the tournament as a result of the initial ballot, and the under-consideration board, which consists of teams that got enough support to merit discussion for possible inclusion into the field. Some of these teams will get into the field over the course of the week. Some, unfortunately for them, will not. So how does a team earn a spot on either the at-large or under-consideration boards? Teams getting all but three eligible votes as an at-large team are in the field. For most teams, that is a minimum of nine of the 12 committee votes. However, since athletic directors may not vote for their own team, and commissioners are not allowed to vote for any of the teams in their conference, some teams require eight of the maximum 11 at-large votes. If a team fell short of that threshold, but received at least four votes as either an at-large or under-consideration team, it qualifies for placement on the under-consideration board. Teams that won their regular season conference championship and earned a number one seed in their conference tournament automatically get placed on the under-consideration board. This is what the initial ballot looks like. On each committee member's screen, he or she will see an alphabetical listing of each team eligible for the tournament, followed by buttons for at large and consideration. Teams that are ineligible to participate in the tournament have their voting buttons disabled as do teams that have already won their conference tournament and thus earn the league's automatic qualifier. In addition, committee members may not vote for their own school and commissioners are not allowed to vote for any of the teams in their conference. So, for example, when Mitch Barnhart was on the committee, the voting buttons for Kentucky were disabled because he is the school's athletic director. Otherwise, committee members can vote for as many teams under consideration as they deem worthy for possible inclusion into the field. Remember though, there is a cap to the amount of at-large schools a committee can vote for. At the top of the screen, committee members will see both a counter for each of the categories, as well as a summary of the schools that have received their support. Once finished, the committee member will click the submit button at the top of the page. After all 12 votes have been submitted and electronically tabulated, the two boards are formed. A list of teams that received at least four votes of support to merit inclusion on the under consideration board and a list of teams that received all but three eligible votes and thus were voted into the tournament field. This means that for teams that haven't even started their conference tournaments at this point on Wednesday, they're already in the field no matter what happens in their league tournament. An early loss or multiple wins could negatively or positively impact the seed they ultimately get in the NCAA tournament, but their place in the March Madness field is secure. You will also notice a list of schools that are already automatic qualifiers. Several conferences determine their AQ because their tournaments conclude prior to Wednesday's casting of the initial ballot. Those schools are already in the NCAA tournament. So when it comes to selecting teams, they are not part of any discussion. Only when the seeding process begins 
do those teams begin to get talked about? Now that the initial ballots have been cast and tabulated, the committee's sole focus as it begins the selection process will be on the teams on the under-consideration board. Remember, the teams on the at-large board, along with the teams on the AQ board, are already in the field. So now the committee's charge is to select additional teams not yet in the tournament. Each committee's computer screen will have a list of the under-consideration teams, and each member is to select, in no particular order, the best eight teams from this group. Here is what the screen will look like for each committee member. Keep in mind again, if a team that's represented by a committee member is among this list of schools, the voting button will be disabled for that member. Notice, there is a counter at the top of the screen. Once eight teams have been checked, the committee member hits the submit button. When all of the votes are in, the committee is informed of which eight schools receive the most votes. This is an alphabetical list. Committee members don't know how many votes any of these schools received. They just know these are the eight with the most support. In this example, the eight schools are Auburn, Baylor, Iowa, Ole Miss, Seton Hall, Syracuse, Utah State, and Washington. You see those schools in what's called the at-large holding cross-country board. The next step is to conduct a vote amongst these eight teams, meaning each committee member will rank the teams in order. It's a cross-country vote, meaning a team received one point for a first-place vote and eight points for an eighth-place vote. The four teams with the fewest points are in the field as at-large teams, while the other four remain in holding. This video shows you how it works. Once the process is complete, committee members will hit the submit button and the results are shared. On this screen, you will notice four new teams in the at-large field, shown in red. These are the four teams voted in on that election. They include Auburn, Baylor, Ole Miss, and Washington. The other four teams, Iowa, Seton Hall, Syracuse, and Utah State are in holding. The process then repeats itself. Of the teams remaining on the under-consideration board, the committee will select the best eight in no particular order. Since there are already four teams in holding, only the top four teams from this vote make it to the next cross-country at-large vote. Here you'll see a smaller under-consideration board. Remember, four teams have been voted to the field and four teams are in holding. Each committee member picks the best eight from this list, in no order, and hits the submit button. The four teams receiving the most votes join the four holdovers. They are the teams in red, Arizona State, Minnesota, Oklahoma, and Temple. And they join Iowa, Seton Hall, Syracuse, and Utah State for the next ranking vote. These eight teams are then presented to the committee for another rank eight, once again, the four teams with the fewest points from this cross-country ballot are in the tournament. The four who didn't get voted in remain in holding. In this example, the four teams voted into the field were Iowa, Seton Hall, Syracuse, and Utah State. You will also notice that the lowest four teams from the rank vote remain in the holding cross-country board. Arizona State, Minnesota, Oklahoma, and Temple. This process repeats itself until 36 at-large teams have been selected. It's important to note that as you get later into the process and the number of teams on the under-consideration board gets smaller, the number of teams you pick from a list and the number of teams you rank for a vote will decrease. This is commonly referred to as taking smaller bites at the apple. These steps are all spelled out in the Principles and Procedures document. It's also important to note that the process of selecting teams and seeding teams happens simultaneously. Throughout selection week, the committee's focus will shift back and forth from selecting at-large teams to seeding teams that are already in the field. In the next video in our series, 
We are going to discuss the process of placing teams on the initial seed list. We think you'll see some familiar steps when it comes to seeding tournament teams. Thank you for your time today.